So the last Pastor So-and-So video I did actually offended some people. I lost 10 subscribers and he got two dislikes and he's never gotten any dislikes. And it's because I think that one was maybe misunderstood, but it definitely was intended to strike home at a point, which is this. You know, the, the, if the joke he's making is that instead of using the word gospel, he's using license for sin. <laughs> he's calling the gospel a license to sin. And he's saying, you know, I, these guys came to him, you know, they, they wanted me to come up and give him a license to sin, you know, and he was calling, he's saying, I'm not a sim DMV giving out licenses to sin. That's his perspective. But for the perspective of his congregants, they're asking him, why won't you preach the gospel? See? And it just reveals the mindset. The mindset of some people is that the gospel is a license to sin. And this is what Peter is talking about when he says they turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. See, this is what it means to have a form of godliness to deny the power. See, you don't believe. If you believe the, license, the gospel of grace is a license to sin, you're in an awful position. And Paul called the gospel the power of God unto salvation for those who believe. So when you say it's a license of sin, you don't believe in the power of the gospel. The message that Jesus died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and was raised from the dead on the third day, is the holiest thing in the universe besides Christ himself, besides the triune God. That message is power. It is the power of God unto salvation. Watchman Nee went to prison uh, in China and spent the last 20 years of his life there, died as a martyr, essentially. And what he wrote on his pillow, the, I, they found a note. And he was like a very deep theologian. I don't agree with everything he said, but he impacted my life quite a bit. And uh, he was... If you know Watchman Nee's writings, this is someone who was extremely spiritual and clear. And on his pillow, he left a note they found that was the something like Christ died and on the and rose again on the third day, and this is what I've given my life for. That was the that's the end of it for him. And Paul said that that message saves you if you believe it. It is the power of God. It's so simple. A child can grasp it. But it is the power of God unto salvation. And that salvation regenerates a person, giving them a new spirit that is created in the image of Christ in true righteousness and holiness and joins them in an eternal union with the triune God so that the life of God himself is now flowing and they are members of Christ. And whatever you do to the least of one of these members, you do to him. And he protects them and guards them and overshadows them and has marked them as his own and has called them holy and will present them without fault before his throne in glory. And the angels and the universe are going to break forth in praise when these sons of God are manifested. And they were made sons of God by the gospel. That is God's seed through which he begets his children into his family. So for you to call the gospel a license to sin means that you don't understand the power because for you forgiveness of sins just means well I can keep on sinning then right I can do whatever I want 
that's how you respond to it. And, you know, these kind of people who are responding in such a way and they talk to you in that kind of tone do not care about you. They want you to go to hell. They want you to suffer in outer darkness. They want to see you weeping and gnashing your teeth. That's actually what they want for you because they want to take away the assurance that you have in your salvation and and your hope in God's promise and put get you back looking at yourself trying to measure up and the reason you came to Jesus in the first place was because you couldn't measure up you came to a realization that you needed a savior and you believed the gospel which is the power unto the salvation that your savior has affected for you and yes you are a sinner and you are a saint you have an old nature called the flesh that has all the appetites it ever had and has to be mortified by the spirit and you have a new nature which desires the things of god and is created in true righteousness and holiness and wants to be expressed but there is a war between the flesh and the spirit and the victory is won in that war to the degree that we believe and absorb ourselves with that gospel which is the power of god unto salvation and it is through the gospel that the spirit flows and the spirit is the only one who can put to death the deeds of the body so that you can live in a way that expresses christ so there is no if you take away the gospel you take away the power there is no power and that's what it means that they have a form of godliness but deny the power they have a religious life of trying to keep themselves from their sins and hoping that they haven't sinned too much and hoping that god will in the end say yeah they endured to the end and didn't go into gross sins that i disapprove of that's all that's that's what they hope they cannot know what they will do tomorrow but you know that's the thing if you are like this you don't know what your flesh is capable of you don't know what is going to overcome you tomorrow if it's on you you are really in a bad situation you need someone who can keep you and promises to do so no matter how far you go and we are not as grace believers looking for a license to sin that is not true that's what they accused paul of you know but we are also not looking to build our own righteousness we realize that the purpose of the law is only to expose the wrath of god against sin and the ruin of our nature we know that we cannot keep it and we know you don't keep it when you come at us with these accusations, you're under the same accusation. You don't think that you're a sinner like those grace believers, but you are because when the gospel comes to you, you turn it into something unclean. And that's a worse sin than even going out and making your the members of Christ a member of a prostitute. Do you know that Paul when he addressed the church in Corinth and Corinthians 6, his answer for them is, you are the temple of God. He was joined to the Lord as one spirit. Your body has become a member of Christ. Now don't go make your members um, the members of Christ, the members of a prostitute, because when you join yourself to her, you are one flesh. Did you know he didn't tell them, hey, you are not saved nor did he tell them hey go be with the prostitute he told them not to go be with the prostitute but he did not tell them they would lose their salvation this what he did was he pointed them to the realities of what Christ is in you now that you are the temple of the living God you are holy you've been sanctified you've been washed 
you need to realize that your body is a member of Christ and you need to glorify God in your body and give your body over to Christ so that he can put to death the members on the earth, the lusts and everything that come out of that old man and express holiness through you. That's what Paul is saying. And, you know, in Corinth, it was really bad. There were temple prostitutes and there was all kinds of crazy stuff that you could get into without even realizing it. You get invited to one of these parties, which he even said, hey, you need to go to these parties if you want um, because you might be able to witness. Just don't eat meat that's been sacrificed to idols if you know it's been sacrificed to idols for the sake of the conscience of those who invited you. But you know it's nothing. However, I would have you not fellowship with demons, he says. So, at these parties, before you know it, you could be brought right into a situation where now you're drunk, and now someone took you to back room, and before you know it, something's available to you that you would have said no to in any other condition. But in, a, in your weakness, you may, you don't know what you would do in that situation. It's easy when you're in the safety of your own house. It's another thing to maintain holiness in every environment. And Jesus did. Jesus is the only one who could safely go into any environment and not sin. You know, he could drink. And drunkenness was not a thing for him. Because for us, what drunkenness is, is you lose self-control. And you express the flesh and its sin nature. But wine was created by God and if we were holy it wouldn't be an issue because there would be no sin nature to there's no imbalance in the personality so that what you express is just what you express which is holiness righteousness no matter what you take in that's why these things are we need to avoid and be circumspect but not because of a law not because we're legalistic and we're trying to be rigid no, it's because we realize what the goal is. The goal is to express Christ. We are temples of the living God. We've been made holy and we've been made righteous. And all that happened through the gospel. So Paul's corrections of the most severe sins in Corinthians are the gospel. That's what he gives them. That's how he addresses. Because he knows that. That message and their belief in it is the power to save them from those ugly, heinous situations. Now, if it gets too bad, like that guy that was sleeping with his mother-in-law, or his stepmother, I guess, and his the whole church is involved in something ugly, because they were sanctioning and even boasting in it, now a judgment comes in. But even the judgment will just... It's for the deliverance of his flesh over to Satan so that his spirit may be saved in the day of Jesus Christ. If you understand tripartite man, that man is spirit, soul, and body, and that the soul needs to be transformed by the renewing of the mind, and the flesh needs to be put to death, but the spirit has been made alive and is full of the life of God and is the new reality the new man created in, in, in Christ, then you won't go tell new believers who believe the gospel that they've just, they just want a license to sin. They don't want a license to sin. They've been renewed in the inner man and have a whole new set of holy desires, but they don't know how to overcome their flesh and its desires and they need the gospel they need Christ preached to them but you don't understand this because you're blind if that kind of thing offends you you don't believe in the power of the gospel you don't see that it really regenerates someone and makes them new inside and gives them new desires and you need to give them the food to strengthen those desires and point to the fact that they've been made right with God and they have peace with him and it's only through him that they can ever have a chance to enjoy the fruits of holiness they're not going to have any of that if all you're going to do is tell them that all that stuff is just licensed to sin they're not allowed to have any assurance they're not allowed to believe that God forgave all their sins and that they're safe in him and that he will keep them and they can't get pluck themselves out of his hand you don't believe a message like that. 
and therefore you are not saved. If you do not, and that's one thing to be confused and be getting clearer, but if you fight against that truth consistently and you won't budge, you're not saved. You don't believe the gospel. You don't believe it's power. And you called it an unclean thing. And that is what it means. to That's the worst sin in Hebrews where you despise the grace of God and call it an unclean thing and trample the Son of God under your feet. There's no way to come back from that because you've got, if you reject Christ's offering, there is no other offering for sin. You don't have a way to repent now. That You have nothing. What hope do you have? Nothing but the fearful looking to the judgment of God, which will come on you if you are not covered by the blood of Christ. And if you reject the blood of Christ, you've got nothing. Um, okay, well, I had to get going here, but I'm just, uh, I, the, the, I lost 10 subscribers and people disliked that message. And then I had some attacks on some comment feeds. People's, you know, what, what is grace? Somebody said, is it a license to sin? Are you looking for a license to sin? Unbelievable. All right, I'll talk to you later.